So thank you everybody for joining. Um, this is a bit of a kind of last minute bite size that we've thrown into an empty slot that we had in the schedule. And we thought we'd uh, take advantage of that by telling you a little bit about what's happened in the past week or so with the NF Core community and um, some kind of updates which affect us all. Um, this has been a little bit of a last minute talk, even by my standards. So apologies for uh, it not being a very flashy slide deck, but um, hopefully we can we can kind of talk through the different points and please feel free to drop something into a chat uh, if you have any questions um, or maybe Fan can relay any questions to me as I go along. And this can be a bit of a kind of discussion bite-sized talk rather than just me presenting at everybody. Um, and especially if there's anyone listening from the core team, please do stop me if I get anything wrong or miss anything important. Um, so the reason um, we have some updates for, for September um, is something a bit out of the ordinary happened last week, which is for the very first time, um, the core team of NFCore uh, got together <laughs> in person. Um, because of uh, COVID, and the lack of in-person events we've had recently. Um, many people in the core team had never met one another in real life, although we spend a lot of time online chatting to each, to each other. Um, and also over the last couple of years, especially as the NF core community has grown, when we do have in-person events, at hackathons and things, we're always so busy running the event that we don't really have any time to actually do any kind of core team work ourselves. So, uh, I kind of kicked this off this year for the first time that we'd have a little retreat just for the core team where we'd spend a few days getting to know one another and also trying to get through some some work for the core team and make some decisions and we'll really get into in-depth discussions about kind of um, community scale things which are very difficult to take over slack and, and zoom um i'm glad to say it went really really well we had a fantastic time uh, everyone came to kind of hang out in over in sweden um, we got to got to explore our surroundings and we went on a nice walk in the forest and everything, which is uh, where where this photo comes from. Um, and kind of played played games in the garden and stuff like that. And um, did also do a little bit of work. Um, managed to drop into SciLife Lab and uh, use a couple of offices there to spend a couple of days really um, getting some work done. So we had our own kind of mini hackathon. Um, so. I looked over all the notes that we took over the days and kind of broke out these these points, which I'm going to talk over today. Um, the first first one's going to take up most of the time, and I'll just kind of mention the others in passing. Um, so the first thing is teams. So we started NF Core end of 2017, start of 2018. And from <clears throat> very close to the start of that, we, we had a, a core team, which is Again, everything, it's not very good naming <laughs> for NF Core core team, but um, all of you will know who we are. We are quite visible um, and we have been kind of running the NF Core community. And it's worked really, really well, but the NF Core community is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the, the core team has got a little bit bigger recently, but um, it's only so far that we can kind of stretch ourselves. And so I've been feeling for a little while now that it'd be nice to formalize the community structure a little bit more. Uh, create some more teams and formalize responsibilities a little bit within those teams. So we spent a good chunk of a day talking through all of this and which teams we'd like and how they'll be organized and what they should do. And by and large, we try to structure around what is already happening within the community. So this means that it's pretty easy. We don't have to change very much. It should be that there are no real surprises because this is basically how the, how the community is already functioning. Um, but we're just kind of hoping to formalize things, make things a bit more transparent and a bit clearer. Um, and all of this will go up on the website pretty soon. We just haven't got, got there quite yet. So this is an overview. Uh, you can see the core team is still kind of at the middle, um, but we have a, a handful of new, new teams here, which are on this, on this plot. Um, the, the one which is completely new is a new steering group. Um, and this is kind of uh, the top level of the community, if you like. And they, the steering group won't do very much on a day-to-day -day basis, but uh, we'll be there kind of to look after things like finance. Um, in the early days of NF Core, we didn't have any finance, so we didn't really need to worry about that. But with um, funding from Chan Zuckerberg Initiative um, and other kind of actual personnel working on the project now full-time, uh, we do have some kind of higher level decisions to be made. 
So the steering group will kind of take, take charge of all the finance and all those large initiatives and think about some big picture planning. Uh, the core team is basically remaining unchanged, uh, same people. And um, but we, again, we're going to just write down what we actually do. Um, we're, we're doing a day to day running of the community, making decisions. And generally, we make decisions by kind of committee. If anything's not clear, we take a vote. And what we've said now that we have a steering committee is that if ever the core team is split, um, then anything, then uh, <laughs> if there's no clear majority on a the topic, then we'll push that to a steering committee. Uh, I don't expect that to happen anytime soon. It's never happened in in the what four four or five years that we've been running. So, um, but now we have a policy in case it does. Um, and the core team at the end of the day has administrative access to everything. And uh, another important task is they make final decisions on new pipeline requests um, and basically, you know, who should be within NFCore and how the NFCore pipeline uh, community runs. So no big changes there. Um, we wanted to clarify membership a little bit. Uh, again, this is basically how we've been doing it until now, but we wanted to try and make that as transparent to the community as possible. So it, it's a kind of a meritocracy. We basically um, invite people who have visibly been heavily involved in the community. Um, and if, if someone's interested in being part of the core team, then, then they can join. And we want to try and make it explicit that we tr will try and have as best representation as possible. Um, but to mirror the representation of our community. Um, there's a new team here called Infrastructure. Um, this one is kicking off with, with Julia and Matthias, um, basically because these two are now employed to work with NFCore as of this year, which is fantastic. So Julia is employed with, with uh, Chan Zuckerberg Initiative Money to work on NFCore infrastructure code. And uh, Matthias started recently at the Scilife Lab Data Center to work on, on the same thing. Um, and because I've been historically involved in this a lot, um, I'm kind of a lead of this team. So, and this team will work purely on kind of uh, the tools code base on the website and any kind of framework work um, around, around NF Core. And again, we've been working on this stuff for a long time already. So there's no big change here, but now we have an official team. Um, Outreach team has existed for a while, but has been not super well organized. Um, and so we want to kind of take, turn over a new leaf with Outreach a little bit. Um, we've set some new leads. Uh, so Chris, Marcel and Fran, um, and we will kind of go over the membership of the, the Outreach community, um, team soon and check whether people want to be involved and who wants to do what. And we're also setting explicit responsibilities here. Um, we're hoping to pull back a lot at the moment. The core team does a lot of the outreach work. So we're trying to sort of separate those two teams a little bit more now. Um, the safety team, again, has kind of existed for a while, but has been not super obvious to, to find this information. It's listed in the code of conduct and it's been sort of done um, basically on a completely voluntary basis. Um, so now it's still the same, but now we have an official team which will be listed on the website. So Sada, Michael and Chris have been doing a fantastic job the last kind of year or two. Um, and now we're kind of making it explicit that they are responsible for the code of conduct and they are kind of a go-to people if there's any ever any problems, basically either events or, or on Slack. Um, a key difference with the safety team is that they skip the core team and they will go straight to the steering committee with any recommendations if action is needed. Um, another new team, maintainers, this is still kind of in flux at the moment, um, but we're thinking because basically until now the NF core community is just everyone has been maintainers. Everyone has full access to everything. Everyone is expected to help out, but it's not really the case in reality because many people um, are just not developing pipelines, just using pipelines. People are involved to different degrees, uh, have different levels of experience uh, within NF core. So we're trying to add an extra kind of tier in here where there's going to be an explicit maintainers group, which will be people uh, not necessarily in the core team, but who are heavily involved in, in maintenance work. It'll be quite a big team. Um, and we want to try and do this so that we can scale uh, with reviewing pull requests. Um, for example, at the moment, it's quite difficult to get a first release out of, of a new pipeline because we say that the core team has to re 
uh, review that first release, but there's not that many of us and there's lots of new pipelines. So we're going to share this out a bit more if we can um, and basically share out some of this kind of maintenance task. Um, this will be really key for the NF core community and more information will go out soon. We're going to come up with a list pretty soon of, of people we'd like to invite in the first round and we'll, we'll start rotating that list every six months and sort of see how we go. Um, we'll see also how, exactly how we do this in the future, but at the moment, everybody has that right access to every repository within NF Core, and we may change that. Um, we may make it so that most people have read access to most repos, and then the main, maintainers team uh, basically adds people to the pipelines where, where access is required, just to try and streamline everything a little bit more um, and make sure that accidents don't happen. Um, and the eagle eyed of you may have spotted the word ambassadors not noted a couple of times. Um, the ambassadors team will sort of be a bigger extension of the outreach team. And we have some kind of pretty cool stuff planned. Um, but there's a bit too much to write here and it's not very well s settled yet. So just stay tuned if that's, that sounds interesting. Feel free to ping us any questions, but otherwise um, to keep on the lookout and we'll be pushing some, some more information out about ambassadors soon. Right, that's all the team stuff. Any questions before I move on? Or is everyone crystal clear? Sorry, it's a bit of a dry talk. I appreciate that, but. <laughs> um, I gave everything the right to unmute themselves. So if you have questions, just shout out. Cool, all right, well. Um, hopefully everyone's happy with kind of the decisions we've come to. Like I say, hopefully there shouldn't be any big surprises here because this is pretty much how we're already operating. Yeah, Enrique says the teams will get Slack handles to be easy to contact, so we'll set up some infrastructure around these teams. Um, some other things then, we talked through the guidelines uh, a little bit, but NF Core guidelines have been mostly untouched since the very start of NF Core in um, 2018. Um, we've added a few bits over time and they were getting a bit kind of unwieldy, the structure of the page, like some stuff with bullet points, some stuff with sections and things like this. And some stuff was outdated and not really valid and, and some bits we thought were missing. So um, we've updated the, the guidelines page a little bit underneath docs and then contributing and then guidelines. And um, so now the overview page kind of lists all of them in one big list, um, recommendations and requirements. Um, and each each requirement then has a, a dedicated page with a bit more kind of information, uh, just so that you can give space to dig into a bit more details about what we're talking about with the requirements, more than just a bullet point, um, but also gives you a, an overview at the same time. So hopefully this is this is helpful, this is useful. We point to this page a lot, so we're going to continue kind of linking to specific things when it comes up in discussion. And if you're developing within NF Core, you should try and be aware of all the guidelines, especially if you're developing a new pipeline. So uh, how do the guidelines um, influence existing pipelines, the, the new recommendations? Basically, nothing's really changed. Um, so there shouldn't be. And if, you, if you've got an existing NF core pipeline, um, there shouldn't really be anything you need to worry about. <laughs> um, we've made a couple of things a bit more explicit that we have previously been saying on Slack anyway. Um, and mostly have just fleshed out more detail about the reasoning, like why does your pipeline name have to be lowercase without punctuation? And why does uh, does it work like this way or that way? So it's mostly organization of a page and more detail. Um, and yeah. But any questions, of course, shout. Uh, once you've had time to read through these and you know we're happy to take any questions and, and update and modify as, as appropriate um actually someone <laughs> requested this i think this morning or yesterday uh, what, was there anything written about uh, guidelines for reviewing this is ties in with the new maintainers team as well that as we're asking more people to do reviewing um we need to kind of better standardize how reviews should be done we have some documentation already for the modules, I believe, about how pull requests should be reviewed, and we're going to try and write up some more guidelines and some more help for this. Um, and we'll probably do a bite-sized talk about it as well at some point. Um, so this, the aim of this is to standardize our reviewing process and also make it easier 
for new people to get into reviewing, which is a big, big part of NFCore and can be very uh, rewarding in itself and is really critical to the functioning of the community. Um, test data we talked about quite a lot. Um, so a couple of things are going to change. One of the things we're bringing in is a, a new requirement that we want some more information about what test data is, and we want that in a structured way. Um, so we're going to have a new requirement pretty soon for each test data directory to have a YAML file, um, and that, that YAML file will have to have certain keys. Um, so really just to make sure that we know what the data is, where it came from, how it was prepared, and everything. Um, because at the moment we're meant to have readme files, but it's a bit kind of um, hit and miss. Um, that having this will also allow us to add some continuous integration tests to be sure that, that those files are there and, and populated properly before new test data is added, which will again will make reviewing a bit easier. Um, and then James has also written some new guidelines specifically for test data. So again, under docs, contributing test data guidelines. Um, so this is an entirely new page Again, spelling out what we had already been saying on Slack in an informal way, but now everything's listed here about if you're if you're generating new test data, this is how you should do it. Um, one of the things that came up several times, uh, as you might imagine, is about maintenance um, and how do we do this and when should we do it? And I was we're very keen to try and make all of our plans kind of scalable, sustainable not just like, yeah, we should do that and then forget about it because that's very easy to do. Um, so one of the things we're gonna try and start doing is do a bit of spring cleaning every year. Um, James and Chris from the core team are going to take the lead on organizing this and we'll send out reminders and stuff. But the hope is that basically everyone in the community can just kind of have a little think about this once a year uh, and do, do a bit of tidying up. Um, Things like looking at pipelines to see if uh, pipelines are, are being actively developed. We have a handful of quite old pipelines which were maybe started at a hackathon years ago and then sort of abandoned. Um, and other pipelines which might no, might no longer be maintained and maybe kind of getting out of date. So things like looking for those and, and archiving them where appropriate. And again, we're gonna write up some policies about how that process of archiving old pipelines should happen. Um, and also just going through all the different pipelines and sort of checking for old branches which have been merged and can be deleted, old pull requests where, which have been superseded um, and kind of are never going to emerge because it's already been done in a different way uh, and kind of curating the issue list, um, checking for things which have already been implemented or duplicates and just, just cleaning up all this stuff on GitHub. Um, this, this is a constant thing that we should be doing all the time. Uh, but it's just a good time to go once a year and say, have a real focus on it and try and have a community drive on it. We tend to have hackathons in March. So we're thinking it's kind of nice to do it a little bit before then. So that as we go into a hackathon, we've got nicely curated lists of issues for people to work on and everything's fresh and ready to go. Um, there's a lot of papers and pub published papers about NFCore pipelines. Um, so if we go to publications, you can kind of see we've got a list of, of publications here that we collect for the different pipelines where, where, where appropriate. Um, if you didn't know about this, if you have a publication about a, a pipeline, um, whether it's dedicated specifically for that pipeline or it just kind of describes the pipeline, please do add it to this page because it's really helpful to have it here. Um, and it's a bit of a difficult thing because with NFCore, we're a huge community project. And especially when it comes to things like DSL2 modules, um, you know, I could go and create a new pipeline today, import all these modules that other people have written, stitch them together, and very quickly have a pipeline up and running, which would be great. Um, but it'd be nice to be able to cite the people who actually put the work into those modules, who actually wrote the code within the pipeline. So we are going to try and kind of hit this head on and try and write up some, some recommendations for how manuscripts and, and papers should properly acknowledge the community. Um, this is, we've already picked this up with again this week. So it's obviously a hot topic. <laughs> um, and basically it'll be about kind of thinking about where you should look for contributors, um, how, how you could potentially cite them. And we might even come up with a little helper tool to automatically get a list of GitHub usernames and things like this. Um, this will only ever be a helper tool for you if you're writing a paper. It's never going to be like a hard requirement or anything like this. 
Um, we realize that publications are uh, highly political and very important for the people working on pipelines. So at the end of the day, it will always be your decision about who you acknowledge and who you cite within your paper. Um, but this is just a bit of a helping hand, hopefully. Um, want to give a shout out for a couple of Slack channels. There was one we created last week. Uh, we we're talking about how to try and make the community as inclusive to new members as possible. And one of the things that came up is that um, it's easy to sometimes get you know, kind of imposter syndrome when you come and join a new Slack. Uh, you know, you join Slack, there's always people chatting about things you might not understand if you're new to Nextflow or new to the community. And you feel like the question you've got kind of is a bit of a stupid question and maybe you should be able to figure it out. But of course, that's not true. There's, there is no stupid questions and there is no... Um, uh, every if you're thinking a question then chances are very high that other people are as well and that's what the slack is for so we want to be as welcoming as possible and to lower that that threshold um, and we created a, a slack channel specifically for this this feeling called no stupid questions um which was based on another slack organization um i forget who it was who suggested it and what the other slack organization was now but the idea is that this is like a really friendly place to come and ask questions so you can find that um, on Slack now. And I think anyone who newly signs up to Slack will, will join it, but I haven't yet added the whole community. So please go and dig that out and have a look. Um, and another one, which I think is, is a fairly fresh, freshly minted Slack channel, which deserves everyone's full attention is uh, NF Core memes. <laughs> so uh, go and have a look for there and your copy break if you fancy it. And uh, remember that there's the channel browser in Slack. You have a look through there. There's, a lot of channels on the NF Core Slack, partly because we have one for every pipeline, um, but there might be some interesting ones kind of hidden in there. So do do have a poke around um, and see if there's anything in there which might have been added that you might not have seen. Uh, final point, uh, just to talk about the NF Core website a little bit. Um, Matthias especially has been working on this lately and will continue to do quite a lot of work on this. And we've been doing a lot of planning work. Um, First up, so you may have seen duplicate tweets appearing about releases or wrong times and things like that. I think we're pretty sure that's fixed now, so hooray. Um, next on the list is if ever you try and go to the stats page, you'll notice it takes a very, very, very long time to load. And if you're, un if you're lucky, it will load. If you're unlucky, it will crash. And if you're really unlucky, it might crash the website for everyone who tries to look at the website for a little while. So this is not scaling well, and we're we're as a top priority now trying to fix that um, so that the website's a bit more nimble before all of the events we're having in a week or two. Um, so hopefully we're gonna get, get that sorted very soon. A few kind of visual fixes and stuff coming up and things like uh, in the, on the, what we used to do for, for pipelines is um, we used, in the documentation for a pipeline, we used to have any number of markdown files structured however you want it. And we decided a little while ago to try and standardize that to two files. Uh, hey, here we go. That's the error I'm talking about. Uh, two files, usage and output. And that's good for standardization. It means it's easier to do template syncs. It's easier to build the website in a consistent manner um, so that when you're used to looking at one pipeline or another, they all kind of look the same. But we have, have found that there's a bit of kind of pushback against that because it limits a little bit um, if you have a lot of documentation to write, for example, if you want to write tutorials or if you want to write kind of pipeline specific stuff in more detail, then it's useful to have more kind of sub pages. So we're reverting that decision and we're going to soon open up the website so that you can have any number of pages in the docs, but you'll still have to have a usage and an output file as a minimum, but you'll be able to add others. Um, and then the big picture plan with the website is we're going to do a big refresh, hopefully. Um, at some point, we're going to rewrite the whole back end so it's much, much faster, um, scalable, and actually built in a modern way. Uh, and we're also going to restructure the website in, in a big way. We've got some plans where we're going to try and make all the documentation much easier to navigate, come up with a search bar which actually works um, and finds documentation within any pipeline or any part of the website, and a whole load of big improvements coming. So please stay tuned. Right, that's all I've got. Uh, oh, two things I forgot to make slides about. One of them is quite a big one. <laughs> is um, 
Uh, some of you may have noticed in the, the DSL2 modules repository, there's a folder called um, subworkflows, which has been quietly lurking here for a little bit of time. Uh, we worked quite a lot on subworkflows sub last week and made a lot of progress. Um, so this is coming and hopefully pretty soon. I was hoping I would talk about it a bit today, but I think there's some decisions which are still kind of in flux. So maybe at the, um, at the summits, we might have a bit more to say about it, but certainly coming soon, we will have um, subworkflows up and running, we hope. Um, that includes both structure and kind of everything within the NF Core modules repository. And also we got a proof of concept running uh, for NF Core tools um, to work with subworkflows. So that's really, really exciting. I know a lot of people have been looking forward to that and working on that for a long time. And I, th I think we're getting close. Um, and one other thing, I've already spammed everyone about this a great deal. So hopefully you've not been able to miss it. But the next flow summit is coming up. And we also have a bunch of other events around that coming up. So we have free online training, which is next week, which has got a ridiculous number of people signed up to it. Um, it's completely taken us by surprise. I think we've got over 700 people now signed up to join the training, which is just fantastic. Uh, but there's always space for more. So if you're interested in getting some training, please do uh, hop onto that page, get the details and, um, and register. It's the first time we've run it like this, where we're running in three different time zones at the same time. So running for three days for two and a half hours, but you can choose which time of day you want to run it in. Um, so that's really exciting. Then, of course, we've got the hackathon coming up in Barcelona and also online. And then we have the, the main Next Flow Summit coming up as well. Um, we've been updating the, the program a lot recently with different speakers and, and things. Um, we've got a keynote talk by Rob Patro, who's just put up his talk title last night. Um, so lots of really exciting stuff happening there. And hope to see many of you there. Right, with that, please ask me any questions or point out anything I've forgotten or got wrong. <laughs> Happy to put more detail into stuff that I, I touched lightly on. Yeah, Moritz, I think you can, uh, yeah, go on. Um, I was curious regarding test data, if you have discussed in, in the core group uh, and made a decision against the core or whatever, um, what about having test data being built by pipelines themselves? Because it can be quite tricky to uh, for example, if you want to just add on to existing test data and sort of process it further and create another output, it can be quite tricky to reproduce all those steps um, that led to that old test data. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, James mentioned this in the new documentation he wrote, which is basically saying, like, do exactly what you're suggesting. Uh, if the test data for your module can be quickly generated, don't add that to the test data repo. Instead, in your test workflow that you've got in the modules repo, add those other upstream modules to generate it each time. Um, bear in mind that that means every single time that module is tested, it will be running those previous steps. So um, kind of think about the polar bears a little bit. <laughs> think about the resources needed for the CI tests. Uh, if it's heavy lifting to generate those files, then you should do it once and upload the files that are just downloaded and used. But if they're fairly quick to generate, then absolutely don't feel like you need to add that to a test data repo. Instead, put it into the CI workflow. I actually meant um, more, what about starting putting pipelines into the test data repo that generate the test data? Um, so pipelines are already in a test data sets pipeline we, um, repo. We've got a branch for every pipeline. That's how the, the CI tests run for pipelines, but I feel like that's not what you're asking. <laughs> um, you mean generating test data sets somehow. Exactly. Yeah. So so having uh, some kind of more reproducible definition of how the test data, I mean, right now it's basically put put the commands in, in a readme in whatever test data repo uh, or branch. Rather. Um, but basically, how about making that itself more reproducible by right. having proper pipelines? In it? I'm with you now. Uh, yes, this is what this is about, basically. Um, but at the moment, we uh, we are not super happy with the, the readme files. 
there, it's just massive, massive readme file describing what all the files are and where it came from and how it was generated. So we want to move away from this kind of readme file approach where people can add as much or as little information as they want to a structured documentation format. Um, we were mostly thinking about origin, but yeah, absolutely. We, we haven't defined exactly what fields there are yet. So we could also define, you know, a command that was used to generate that test data if it, if it originates from some other kind of file. Um, we've got a test, test data Slack channel. So if you, if you have something specific in mind, hop in there and, and spell out uh, exactly what you mean, and we can discuss it in more detail and put, put something together. Great question. Anything else? Core team, you happy that I haven't forgotten anything? Maybe you should have included more, more photos. <laughs> Great. Okay, in that case, let's uh, wrap it up. And thank you everybody for, for joining and listening. Um, it's, it's real kind of pleasure. It's been a really, really fun week. Um, and I feel like we made tons of progress last week. So I'm really pleased. Um, so if you have any ideas or feedback on decisions we've made, then please let us know. And otherwise we'll continue kind of writing everything up that we took notes on, adding it to the website and, um, and making it easily, easily accessible for you.